Can you explain why outlining matters to mm -hmm. all the screenwriters who are set against it? Yeah, I mean, you don't want to outline to such a degree that you have no juice left for the script. You know, it's not, it's not like building a concrete wall around yourself that you can't break out of. It's basically to give you the bones of structure so you know where your story is going. Now in television, outlining is much more important because if you're under the gun, if they're gonna be shooting in three weeks or two weeks or tomorrow, you, you can't go off into left field. You have, so that's where an outline really needs to be nailed down. Um, in features, it, but see, but what, what this really speaks to is you need to, you need to know, understand how structure works. You know, because structure, I, early in my career, I struggled a lot with structure. And then there was one period one summer where I was writing, I think, all the episodes of a series for CBS. And, um, and I was writing so much and so quickly, all of a sudden it just clicked in. It was like it went right into the groove and suddenly structure was simple for me. It was just like build, it was like the bones of a house. And the bigger the story, the bigger the house, but it's like the framework that holds it all together. And I understood that. And, and then it became just second nature. It was very funny when, I, when Michael Reeves and I were, were uh, outlining the, uh, the Sulu story, the Star Trek story that we, we did with George Takei, <laughs> we were both old hands. Michael was the writer who got me into television. And at one point we we're outlining the steps and jotting it down. And then about two thirds of the way through, we just looked at each other and Michael said, you got this, right? And I said, yeah. And then, so we didn't outline the rest of it because we both knew where it went. And then we just wrote it. And, uh, but again, you have to be a really old hand to know how to do that stuff. But, um, but outlines are great because then you know, well, Rod used to say, Rod Sterling used to say, that if he knew the ending, he could write a script. But, if, but he said, yeah, I've got so many stories where it's a beginning and a middle and, and, I, and no end. And he said, I can't write those because I don't know where they go. I don't know how they resolve. And so outlining, rigorously outlining, means you know the beginning, the middle, and the end. And uh, because you do not want to get lost in the middle, you know, and, uh, or at the beginning, or anywhere. Um, because a story has to satisfy the viewer. It has to come to an ending where you go, okay, well, that was worth my time. And, uh, and so outlining is very important. It's not, I've, uh, you know, again, you, if you come up with a better idea while you're writing, okay, if, but you have to know that it is a better idea. You can't think, oh, well, that didn't pay off. If it doesn't work, don't do it. it it's better to follow an outline that works rather than experiment. But, um, but the more you write, the stronger you get at this stuff, you know? And um, you just learn, you learn your craft and craft is structure, craft is outlining because, um, you know, that's, that's just how it works. You know, it's, I, you know, it's like I, I write short outlines. I don't, I don't, I would never write like a 30 or 40 page outline, but like the most I would do for an outline would be maybe seven pages for an hour script. Um, and with novels, I, I'll jot notes. I don't rigorously outline for novels. But I know the structure, I know where the story goes, and I know who does what. Um, but, but there are writers who don't outline, who are still very, very good and succeed. But if you're just starting out, I think outlining is a really important tool. I, I would urge everyone to utilize it. But, but at the end of the day, it's getting to the end of the story. And however you got there, if it works, it doesn't really matter how you got there. Uh, outlines are just a tool. How would you teach story structure to someone who needs help? I would say watch movies that you feel have a satisfactory ending and break, write, down the, write down the scenes, write down what happens, write down how the characters move through it and what the story does and see why that satisfies, why that works. You know, years ago I was hired to do a pilot where one of the characters was a gangster, the sort of a bad guy at the beginning, but then he helps these two kids and he turns out to be a good guy. And I thought, well, how how do they do that trick? How do, like, how do you do a trick where you like somebody even though they're a bad guy at the beginning? And so I watched Casablanca and I saw that everything Bogart says is cynical, but everything he does is moral, is ethical. And his actions are speaking louder than his words. It was a very simple trick and a very subtle one, but it worked like gangbusters. It was terrific. And so that once I knew to do that, that told me where I could go. And so you, you know, there's thousands of TV shows and movies. Don't, don't try and invent stuff from whole cloth. S study structures that worked. A structure is like a machine. It's like, you know, um, you don't, 
I don't. I, I always say don't steal plots, but study structure, um, because there's stuff that works and stuff that doesn't work. And the more you deviate from standard structure, the better the writing has to be. So, for instance, Quentin Tarantino can use very unusual structures, but the writing has to really be solid. Um, and uh, so that's just the way the way that works. How do you write a scene? Uh, you try to have every scene have an emotional point, okay? Uh, you, d you try to avoid scenes that are just exposition. That's a trap that people fall into where everyone's talking just to explain twists and turns of the story, and they're boring scenes. You come from character. Who's, who needs what? Who wants what? Who's longing for what? Who's hiding what they're really feeling? Who's not saying what's going on in their heart? Or in their head, you know, you find the juice of the scene. Usually, it's conflict, but not always. You find something. I mean, usually the way it works with an audience is the structure is familiar, the details of the story are fresh. So, in other words, like if you go to a certain movie, you know, okay, this is most likely going to have a happy ending. Okay, but what the characters say, how they get there. That's where you can surprise an audience, and that's where you can engage them. Um, and so, so it might be a, stor a story from your life, or someone you know, or something you read, or you know, any number of things. I mean, everything I write is a synthesis, a combination of everything and anything. Um, for instance, I knew I wanted to do a scene in Space Command that was in Spanish, because one of our actors was, was from Venezuela, and he's very charming and very, very good. Uh, Victor Manso. And so when I did the bonus episode during the pandemic, I said, okay, I'm going to write a scene uh, where he's calling his estranged father to invite him to his wedding. And, and so I wrote the scene in English. And I originally wrote the role of the father to be Guillermo del, del Toro. I reached out to Guillermo, and he wasn't available at that point for various personal reasons. But but Guillermo had, a, had certain elements from his childhood that I actually wove into that, that scene. And, and it was about the son introducing his fiance to the father and trying to get the father to come to Mars in that case to attend the wedding. And ultimately they want the father to move in with them. And it's about a father's disappointment in his son's choices and then finally coming to accept who his son is and see the commonality between the two of them. And it's a lovely scene. And I was really glad to do it in Spanish because I love the idea of having different languages in Space Command. For instance, Mira Ferlin and the actress who play her daughter speak Serbo-Croatian uh, when they talk to each other. And, uh, but it's a great scene with the father and the son and the fiancé because you stop realizing it's in Spanish. You're so engaged in the people and reading the subtitles. And, so, and I had Victor translate it into Spanish. And every now and then he'd say, well, it can't be this exact thing, but this will make sense uh, culturally. And I said, sure, fine, great. And, uh, but I really love that scene because there's an emotional truth in it. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's great. Every now and then I'll write a scene that's just for the gosh gee whiz, you know, a, a rocket ship taking off or, you know, something like that, you know, Battle on Titan or whatever. It's very funny because we were shooting the Battle on Titan where these synthetic humans, they're soldiers and they're gunning down these, these uh, freedom fighters who are human. And, uh, one of the extras didn't show up, so I said, "Well, I'll put on a spacesuit." I said, "But you have to, you have to disintegrate me." <laughs> so I'm in the space, and I get hit by a laser blast and disintegrate with a scream, and it was great fun, great fun. Yeah, Bergman was great at that too. What is it, Sonata? The, the piano player daughter. Yes. They come. Um, she's Sonata. right, and then yeah. or and no, no, sorry, the piano player mother, and ah, then the yes. the the, the uh, social worker daughter, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and you know it, it's you yes. don't need subtitles to to no. you know the, no. the um, tension and the and, emotion. And well, now we have, thanks to Netflix, we know that foreign TV shows can be successful here, and that people will read subtitles, and that's. Fabulous! I, I'm I'm so, oh, yeah. so glad of that. I, I, well, I don't mind me reading subtitles. No. I absolutely love yeah. foreign films, but yeah, it helps to read. So yeah, it does. Yeah, this comes in handy. <laughs> and not just Ramona Cleary books. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> nothing against them. Yeah, there you go. I like those. Um, we've heard that. Mm -hmm. I think you said this the other day on, yes. on your live stream. So I'll just. We've heard that you say you don't come up with storylines unless there's a chance to utilize them. Mm. Why is that? Well, I, I might come up with an idea. But the ones that I really dig in on and write the script, um, I'm, I'm writing that to shoot it. I'm writing it to make it. I'm not, I'm not 
you know, writing, it's not an exercise. I never write just for like the, f I was gonna say the fun of it. I do write for the fun of it, but I don't write something that's just gonna be in a drawer. That's, that's purposeless. Um, and, and, and also the, my heroes when I was a kid, like Rod Serling, like Ray Bradbury, they wrote books and TV shows and movies. They could do all three. And so I've always throughout my career written books. TV is my main form. TV is my main art form and my art form of choice. But I've always written books. I've always, um, you know, written screenplays as well. And so, uh, and the books were, you know, I'm, I'm really proud of the books I've done. You know, and uh, The Twilight Zone Companion, the, the book with Guillermo, Greenlighting Yourself, the Magic Time Trilogy of novels, they've all, I'm really glad I got to do them. They were uh, well worth doing. Well, what if someone says, well, I don't, I'm not there yet. I don't have anyone to, mm -hmm. to pitch to, or I haven't assembled my team where we can crowdfund and make this. Um, mm -hmm. what's, what's your advice to that? I mean, so they, it, should they still be writing just yes. to utilize them, not well, just to sit in a drawer? You have to learn your, your craft. You know, you have to know how to tell a story and you need to get feedback so that you know if something works or doesn't work. But on the other hand, if you're shooting, you learn very quickly when you're shooting if something works. Because if the actors can't deliver it or, you know, I, I really encourage people to shoot what they've written at least to see how it works when actors are saying it. I mean, you, you get a wealth of knowledge from making it because the script again is, this, and it's, it's, it's such a quiet object. You know, whereas if, a, if you make a short or a, a feature, that can start getting attention, that can start getting, and, and, and if it doesn't work, you say, oh, those characters don't sound realistic. I have to work harder on my dialogue or, or um, whoa, this, this scene was really boring. There was really nothing happening there. You know, it's, things will become incredibly clear when you shoot them. And, uh, and that's again where television is such a great learning ground because when everything you write gets made, you very quickly learn what an actor can say and what they can't. And, uh, and you know, you, 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 it's a very fast learning curve. And uh, I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, but I would say to anyone, be bold. Don't be, you know, I was, I was gonna say don't be afraid. You can be afraid, but there's a, there's a saying that I have in my wallet which is the bolder I am, the better things go. And that's so true. You know, if you, if you fall on your face, you'll get up again. You know, I, people say, well, life is like a river and it takes you where you're meant to go. I say, I say to people, if you fell in a real river, you wouldn't say that. You'd swim like hell for the shore. You know, it's like, you know, don't, don't just let, let things carry you along. Figure out what you want, and, and, but really go for it. You know, it's like failure is not a terrible thing. They don't take you off to writer's jail. You know, it's they, it, if you fail, get better. It's a process. And, and, and also, by the way, uh, you know, sometimes what you write, some people will like it, some people won't. But if they really like it, if you polarize people where some people really love it and some people really hate it, that's not bad. I mean, look at the work of David Lynch. You know, you, you don't have to please everyone. You just have to please someone. And the first person you have to please is yourself. And the way you please yourself is by saying, oh, I got that right. That came out well, that was, that was great. And um, you know, so, so the lovely thing is that it used to be that you had to come here to Hollywood to make dreams come true. And now you can make them come true anywhere. If you're in East McKeesport, Pennsylvania or, or Kuala Lumpur, you can still, we've all got phones, we've all got video cameras, we've all got the internet. It's make use of what's at hand. You're in the 21st century for God's sake. You know, you thank God, but um, don't waste the opportunity. You could, make a, you could make a short film this week. You know, don't wait. Don't wait, act. Ray Bradbury had a wonderful sign over his typewriter that I now have over my computer that says, don't think, act. And that's so true. It's, well, it actually is don't think, do. And it's like, yeah, right on. Yes, absolutely. What was the most polarizing David Lynch work? Wild at Heart? <laughs> Dune, probably. Oh, Dune, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, no, but, but Blue Velvet. I mean, I mean, his, I mean, one of my favorite David Lynch stories is um, Elaine and I went to see Mulholland. And at the end of that, was it Mulholland Drive? It's whichever one he directed, Mulholland Drive, I think. And at the end of the movie, you know, the screen goes to black. And there's that moment where everyone in the audience is just seeing in the darkness before the house lights come up. And someone yelled out, what the fuck was that? <laughs> And so, but I had understood what the story was. So in the lobby, I started telling, I was surrounded by a crowd of people from the, from the audience, telling them what the movie had been about, what it was. 
because they had totally lost. They had no comprehension. And then they said, oh, okay, now we get it. But, uh, but again, it's fine. Because the thing about David Lynch is he's following his aesthetic purpose. Mm. He is telling stories he wants to tell that only he can tell. Great, you know, great.